uh, let's talk about Eric Larson's 2006 nonfiction work, Thunderstruck, uh, the twin stories of Guillermo Marconi, I'll just say Marconi from now on, uh, Nobel Prize winning inventor of the commercial wireless telegraph, and Hockley Crippen, a bespeckled, mild, uh, tonic doctor, doctor in quotations, uh, American living in London with his wife, Cora Turner, music hall singer, and how their lives, uh, the, the, the two intertwine. And spoiler, I don't think they actually entwine that to the level of, uh, that these two stories should be put into the same, into the same thing. So we have the story of Marconi, uh, this uh, born of uh, Irish uh, mother, uh, Italian father, very wealthy, wealthy family, homeschooled, who gets fascinated by uh, all the new discoveries uh, in electro in electromagnetic waves, uh, and indeed uses all this inf all this information from um, you know people of uh, Hertz, James Maxwell Clark, and Oliver Lodge, who comes up a lot more in the story, among others, to, by sort of sheer brute force, uh, experimentate, trial and error experimentation, to come up with, um, over the course of this, of, of this story told between sort of eight, the 1880s to 1910, to come up with a commercially viable, use, actually usable, a wireless telegraph. Uh, within that story, he very much comes across as, you know, very obsessive, uh, socially blind, uh, ruthless, basically your, your basic tech bro, as, as Larson does put, point out in the book. And, you know, his story at the beginning here is really, really fascinating. We have all the kind of the competing claims for the technology. We have uh, the competing companies. Uh, we have he pisses off Germany uh, specifically. Uh, the the you know he he pisses off Germany and there's like espionage done on Marconi uh, to kind of just figure out kind of reduplicate this technology. This technology which uh, the powers can see is going to be extremely extremely useful in the in the future. Um, and uh, he has definite ongoing battles with Oliver Lodge, who probably in a different world, if he had been as focused as Marconi, could have been the person who came up with the first commercially viable thing. But as a sign of the times, Lodge is super into the uh, into spiritualism talking to the dead and is uh, is continually getting distracted get continually getting distracted by that sort of thing so he he does not and when he kind of suddenly snaps back into a scientist mode it was what i would say uh it's too late and marconi has gone ahead i mean there is continual battles and i mean marconi is not a scientist he is somebody who was homeschooled and is very much kind of self a lot of self education has gone on here he does not make any claims to being an actual scientist or even like sort of understanding some of the more fundamental underlying things of of uh, underlying um theories within within this within this uh, technology and i mean a part of it is just the science isn't there but he forges ahead and is able through as i said trial and error a lot of trial and error to come up with a commercially viable way of sending signals through the ether, as it might have been said uh, at the at the time. Um, so, side by side of this, we follow uh, this uh, American-born uh, fellow Hockley Crippen, uh, born in 1862, dies in 1910, uh, and his career, yes, is sort of the home homeopath, uh, tonics doctor, a uh, very much. Uh, you know, the, the quack medicine of its time. It's one of these things of uh, so, somewhat depressing. You think about all the kind of the quack remedies and uh, medicine that is hawked nowadays online. It's like, yeah, yeah, same people were doing the same sort of thing at that point, uh, running just that little bit ahead of the law that way. He ends up more marrying uh, a woman called who calls herself at least Cora Turner, who is a music hall singer. And she's not a very successful one, but we do get kind of an interesting glimpse into the music hall scene, this whole this whole kind of swath of popular culture that just 
disappeared that you 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 know there's no recordings of it there's no there's nothing that you can you can find um it's 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 just one of these fascinating areas of like I'm, I'm usually interested in like kind of popular culture of of times uh, as a way of kind of like oh this is you can kind of get get the sense and the taste of what a time was like and i'm very interested in this particular time that uh as i've said in in past videos so uh getting a little bit of that is actually is is actually interesting but this seems to be it's the sort of it it is it is definitely kind of true crime part of this book and i've heard people say oh i'm really bored with the the mark carney telegraph i wish there was more of the true crime i'm the other way around it's like this seems like a pretty humdrum uh it's like henpecked husband snaps and murders his wife and it, it doesn't really go it, i mean a part of it is you never know what's in somebody's head and i mean as you find out the particulars of the murder because he does murder his wife uh in this book there's like okay there's some really gnarly stuff here but it's probably just inaccessible to us today of exactly going into the what he did to his wife it's just like it's um we don't have that. Maybe, maybe that that's this is wouldn't be the book for that sort of thing. But I find it a lot. I find it a lot more humdrum. Even though there's like yeah, the tonics side, uh, the you know the kind of the flim flam medicine side, and there's the music hall kind of culture side. I, that I find interesting. But we don't get enough of that to enliven enliven the story of um of the the murder that results out of here. I think it gets um. Uh, the most famous uh, example of this is apparently Alfred Hitchcock using some of the kind of the, the ideas from this for Rear Window, uh, where, you know, we know what happens to the wife across the way in Rear Window. So, but uh, the, the I guess the main thing about this book that sort of just doesn't work for me is that I think Larson tries to make a case that, ah, this was the big thing that really galvanized the public and really like caught their attention of the the new this new technology this is the thing that was going to launch it but then immediately afterwards he says and yes like this happened in 1910 it's like a couple of years later we have uh the uh, sinking of the titanic and how that the message sent from the titanic resulted in you know maritime rescue being able to uh, affect it way quicker than it ever would have been before i mean that was huge and you got the sinking of the lusitania um you know there's there's far more significant things that happen this is uh the the i mean it's a new it's a new story because it's probably kind of insignificant this story of uh dr crippen as he's you know you know dr crippen's story isn't particularly that important uh to to the whole thing of the wireless telegraph it seems like it's far more just like a interesting footnote oh this is the first suspect who uh was fleet went on the lamb after killing his wife he goes on the lamb with his mistress and this is what we use to catch him uh aboard a they sent a he he jumped aboard a ship heading for america and uh they telegraphed and there was a kind of a bouncing back and forth of telegraphs the police were there to, to welcome dr Cri crippen uh to uh, north america when he arrived so yeah yeah i i i didn't find i didn't find that particularly part of the story that interesting i didn't find the true crime part particularly that en engaging even though it had some background details i mean it's like this is the kind of stuff of like i for myself, I'm really interested in all bits of pieces of this time, so I'm trying to suck up things and get different details. But this overall story, I just don't think it particularly worked. And Marconi's story starts to kind of tail off in interest as he's kind of made his uh, great his his he's he's made he's made his great uh, kind of um, not discoveries, but his he's he's put forward his great inventions, and it kind of seems to tail off that way too. And we get a little bit more into his personal life which is typically of a super driven guy it's like it's not happy for the people that you know the 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 woman that he married or the you know next next woman it's like yeah it's like yeah so it's pretty so so i i'm i'm in, i'm interested in it for the subject matter i don't think it really holds together as um a thesis it's more like here's my excuse for telling this story but it's not really like oh i needed to i needed to hear this particular telling uh, about um about marconi connected with this kind of very sadly humdrum uh though grisly uh true crime story all right 
I'll leave it there. More videos later.